Hello everyone. Today we will uh, examine a patient with lower limb ischemia in detail as a short case and I will also tell that how to uh, present a case of limb ischemia when it comes as a long case. So uh, the examination pattern would be the same like proper exposure of the limb up till the umbilicus and the abdomen. So starting with the proper exposure then uh, the uh, introduction and consent inspection palpation percussion and auscultation percussion and auscultation is also done in a case of lower limb ischemia so uh, starting with the exposure as i have already told you that the exposure in a case of lower limb ischemia it should be up to the level of the umbilicus after proper exposure we will Take the consent from the patient. This may have introduction consent to skip the patient for us are disoriented. So starting with the inspection, the inspection till the abdomen level, but to uh, keep uh, keeping in mind the social constraints here, we will uh, expose up till the mid thigh. First of all, we inspect the limb as a whole because whenever there is a pair, always compare both lower limbs should be exposed and inspected properly their general look the uh, distribution of hair any shiny skin comparison of the muscle atrophy and muscle mass then inspection of the involved limb itself if there is any ulcer present on the limb we will examine the ulcer first we will uh, examine the ulcer in detail. Then we will proceed with the examination of the ischemic limb. But if there is no ulcer, we will start with the examination of the uh, protocol of the ischemic limb. On inspection, we will check. For the brittleness of the nails, loss of the pulp then the pressure areas for ulcers what are the pressure areas malleoli medial malleolus lateral malleolus and the heel and any skin discoloration as we can see in this limb there is obvious blackish discoloration of the forefoot starting from the toes till the midfoot then also notice whether this is dry gangrene or wet gangrene and whether this is continuous gangrene or skip lesions, skip lesions or marbleization that is present in the acute limb ischemia. If it is continuous and dry gangrene, it is chronic limb ischemia. Then we will check the skin changes, loss of hair, thick, shiny skin, which are also uh, the signs of acute limb ischemia. So in this patient, no hair loss, no thick, shiny skin. There is dry gangrene and continuous gangrene involving the distal half foot of this patient. All these signs indicate the chronic limb ischemia. Then the comparison of the ipsilateral limb with the contralateral limb for the uh, loss of muscle bulk and atrophy or hypotrophy. Now we will do some tests uh, to know the severity of the ischemia, and those are the Burgess test and the venous guttering, uh, venous filling, capillary filling, yeah, arterial filling. So how do we do that? We will uh, elevate the limb gradually and we'll check the uh, change of the color, pallor of the limb. Normally, uh, we can elevate the limb 
up to the 90 degrees and the color will not change normally but in ischemic limb the uh, color will change to pale the limb will become pale even at the 20 degrees or 30 degrees that depends on the severity of the limb ischemia if the limb becomes pale at 20 degrees or below 20 degrees it indicates severe ischemia so this is the burgess angle burgess angle is the angle where limb becomes pale after it is elevated and it indicates the limb ischemia and what is the venous guttering normally if we elevate the limb above the heart level the, which is the water level of the body the veins get collapsed normally veins get collapsed but in ischemic limb the veins become become guttered grooving of the veins is there which indicates the limb ischemia so let's check in this patient so we will elevate the limb gradually and we'll have a have an eye over the color change there should be proper light so this is the idea behind the burgess elevation angle we uh, could not appreciate the color change that much then the venous guttering we will uh, let the veins to fill with blood and elevate again to check the venous guttering so we uh, couldn't appreciate any venous guttering in this patient now we will bring the elevated limb back to the normal position and check for the venous filling and the capillary filling venous filling is when the limb is brought back to the normal position below the heart level the veins get filled with blood normally venous filling is uh, five seconds within five seconds veins get filled in a normal individual but in severe limb ischemia if it takes more than 15 to 20 seconds then it is the severe limb ischemia then the capillary filling that is the uh, when the limb turns pink back again after it is brought back to the normal position because after elevation it got pale now it will turn back to the pink color normally limb turns pink immediately when it is brought back to the normal position but if it takes more than 10 seconds it is severe limb ischemia now coming towards the palpation before palpation ask the patient for any tender areas for temperature you should take off the gloves and check the temperature with the back of your hand first at the normal area then at the affected side gradually keep checking the temperature proximally in acute limb ischemia the temperature overlying the affected area the area which is ischemic would be cold so keep checking the temperature where you feel the normal temperature the point where the temperature is comparable to 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 the opposite limb note that site that is the demarcation line or the area or the cut off area jahan se distally the limb is ischemic then on the affected limb you can see there are some blanchy areas over the area of the medial malleolus blanching indicates the acute changes also indicates acute on chronic limb ischemia then you can check for the pedal edema here we can appreciate the blanching better than the previous one if you can see here the skin is more thick and shiny as compared to this area and in the setting of this dry gangrene 
the presence of this picture indicates the acute and chronic limb ischemia there is blanching there is edema there is shiny skin and loss of hair so it is acute and chronic limb ischemia then we will check the capillary refill and the venous refill as this uh, foot is having dry gangrene we cannot check the capillary refill in this patient in this foot but what is the capillary refill and the venous refill for the uh, idea we, we we can demonstrate it in the opposite foot the capillary refill is when we press the nail of the toe after pressing the toe for 3 to 4 seconds there would be blanching and when we release the thumb the color of the toe turns pink within 3 seconds in normal foot if it is within 3 seconds the capillary refill is good the flow in that vessel or capillaries is good it means there is no ischemia as you can see in this foot the blanching becomes pink within 3 seconds idea ho raha hai na aapko nazar aa raha hai what is venous refill it is called the harvey's test we will block the area of the vein which is more towards the heart and then we will sweep the finger over the lower segment to empty the vein of blood like in this manner and then we will lift the distal finger and check the venous refill so the venous refill should be immediate in normal limb as you can see in this patient empty the vein with blood then lift the finger it fills with blood immediately so there is no limb ischemia then we will check the circumference of the calf and compare it towards the opposite limb we will take the mid calf circumference where the muscle bulk is maximum so remember the measurements it is 26 26 cm on the affected limb now on the opposite limb here it is 25 there is 26 what does it mean in chronic limb ischemia there is atrophy of the muscles but if it is acute ischemia or acute on chronic setting there would be edema transient swelling of the limb which will lead to the increased diameter but it doesn't mean that muscle health is good that would be the skin subcutaneous tissue edema changes which adds to the increased diameter not the muscle itself now checking the pulses that is very important step in the examination of the limb ischemia we start with the dorsalis pedis artery pulsation and move proximally we will reach uh, uh, to the site where we can feel the pulses as compared to the opposite limb going proximally and we will notice the site that this is the area where we can feel the pulse and from below this area we cannot appreciate the pulses means this is the cut off point so starting with the normal limb palpate the dorsalis pedis artery pulsations i can feel the dorsalis pedis pulsation in this area now towards the opposite side dorsalis pedis is not palpable and that is obvious in the setting of this dry gangrene then the posterior tibial between the medial malleolus and the heel in between these two areas feel for the posterior tibial artery pulsations this is also not palpable in this limb then palpation of the popliteal artery there are two to three methods to check the popliteal pulses but we will uh, palpate the pulses uh, via method which is most common that is the semi flexion of the knee put your thumbs anteriorly over the tibia near tibial tuberosity and with the middle fingers we uh, palpate the popliteal pulses <clears throat> more towards the medial side so popliteal artery pulsations are absent in this patient if the popliteal is also not palpable we will move more proximally 
and feel the femoral artery pulsations. Oh, feel. Oh, God, I just feel the right on the left. The femoral artery pulsations are palpated 2.5 cm uh, lateral and inferior to the pubic tubercle. Feel the pubic tubercle 2.5 cm infrolaterally. Check for the femoral pulses. The femoral pulse is good in this patient. After the uh, palpation for pulses, we will check the sensory motor function of this limb. Sensory motor examination. For sensory motor examination, again compare with the normal limb. For sensory function, we will check the dermatomes and we will see which dermatomes are intact, starting distally and going proximally. Keep on checking the relevant dermatomes and note the area where patient starts to feel the uh, sensations. Then the motor function as our patient is a bit disoriented we are unable to perform the sensory motor function in this patient but in a short case uh, complete the sensory motor examination in detail first uh, checking the power in the opposite limb starting at the ankle then the uh, knee area check the function dorsiflexion plantar flexion then the flexion and extension at the knee against resistance and uh, uh, notice the power of the limb. Compare it with the affected side. Then the joint movements. The joint movements, whether they are restricted or not. Check the joint movements in the affected limb. But be careful not uh, to give the pain to the patient. Do not do further harm. So. If the uh, movement is painful, we can omit this step. Now, while the patient is lying down, we will auscultate the precordium area for any uh, murmurs. Okay. After that, we will uh, check the bruise. Kon kon si bruise check karte? Aortic bruise, renal bruise. Iliac and femoral aortic bruy in the epigastrium, then the renal bruy just above the umbilicus in the mid clavicular line, then the iliac bruy below the umbilicus level in mid clavicular line, then the femoral bruy. After that, we uh, elevate the head and up to the 45 degrees and check the JVP for uh, the signs of. Uh, CCF. After that, we ask the patient to sit down. Ask the patient to sit down and auscultate the back. Auscultation is uh, done to check for any inspiratory creps. Again, to know the CCF changes.